Hello, um, my name is Matthias. Uh, you can find me on social network under the nickname Bloody All. I work in a startup called Be Opinion, and I'm uh, the co-founder of the Putain de Code blog, which uh, talks about uh, web development. Let's talk about JavaScript, even if we already talked a little bit about it. Uh, JavaScript is cool because it's uh, an easy language to start using. It's really really permissive, you can make mistakes and fix them, and it's available everywhere. It's even more available than Java nowadays. JavaScript is less cool though, because it's easy to start, but hard to get right. Uh, it can lead to, as we said just before, a lot of errors, and in order to emulate typing, we just use some weird patterns that don't work. Uh, duck typing, which is basically, if it looks like this, it might be just this kind of object, or prototype ch chain checks, which don't work if your uh, object comes from an iframe or stuff like this, which is tricky, and you can mostly rely on hope. JavaScript is a weakly and dynamically typed language. That's the reason why we need to rely on these hacks. It's quite poor in data structures. You can only assign a, for a primitive or an identity in this, these data structures. And all of this makes JavaScript a really, really unsafe language. On top of that, you have runtime semantics which are completely broken. You can add two numbers and get a number, add it with a string, you get a string, add an object with an array, then you can hang yourself. But for JavaScript, this is just really, really fine. So how do we fix JS? You can use Flow or TypeScript, as you've heard. But how about we don't try to fix JavaScript, just consider it's broken, leave it like this, and not use JavaScript. So, there is a language called OCaml. OCaml, sorry. OCaml is cool because it is a strongly and statically typed language, and it has a powerful inference, which means you don't have to write all the annotations. The compiler will understand most of it, and you have 90% of your code base without the need of writing the types and it will just understand it is what it is. Uh, you have good data structures. You can do much, much more than what you can do in JavaScript. But OCaml is less cool because it has a syntax that if you come from JavaScript, you just find horrendous because it's just not the way we did it for the past 20 years. That's where reason comes in. Reason is a project that just takes the OCaml semantics and uh, lets you write it with JavaScript syntax. You have basic type, uh, which you can call primitives. You have integer, float, string, character, list, and array, which are different in uh, functional languages. And you have the last type, which is an option. You don't have any concept of null in uh, OCaml. You just have to bring the optional value everywhere and react according to that. But you cannot have any null pointer, null pointer exception or stuff like this. Uh, the code we saw before with the weird JavaScript thing cannot happen in reason because the functions are statically typed and the compiler would just say to you, fuck off, you can't. Uh, you have auto currying, which is Basically, uh, the example we saw in TypeScript that was uh, the file, uh, like, 100 lines of code, there you have it for free. That means that um, if, you don't apply, if you don't give all the parameters to a function, it will just return a new function that expects the rest of the arguments. This is quite powerful when you can see the, uh, the example where uh, you have the big option, uh, the big op option file, uh, the big options like with uh, 100 uh, properties. Now you have it right into the function with these name arguments. Uh, you have default arguments, optional arguments, everything you need. You have a module system that's much, much more powerful than what you can find in JavaScript. You can, every file by default is a module but you can declare a module in them. You can statically extend, which means you can take a module, put it in the, in the current one, and add functions. You can also open a module that makes everything in the module you open accessible in the code that's next to it. And you can open locally modules. That's pretty nice, and as a side effect of that, every time you remove a line of code, 
because you don't have the import on top of it, you don't need to link by default, it will just remove the dependency. Um, the autocomplete with that is pretty nice in nearly any, any IDE you have, in Vim, VS Code, uh, Atom, whatever. Uh, one particular thing when you come from JS is that any, uh, the equivalent of objects, which are called records, have a finite number of keys. You can't just say it can have a, a name and the, I can uh, not define the age property, it will be fine. No, you have to declare it. That lets, for, that lets the compiler write some optimizations we can see later. But uh, every object by default is immutable. It's pretty nice. And the compiler, I don't know if you see it, but it's able to guess what kind of type, what kind of object you meant, and it will just say, you added a field that's not in the type or you are missing a field. You have variant types, which are basically the unions we saw in the talk before. Uh, let's say you have the example of uh, a message on a chat. Uh, you can send a text, a media, and a whiz. And uh, anytime you will receive a message, it's one of these three. Then React lets uh, reason, sorry. Uh, reason lets you uh, react to these uh, different uh, cases uh, with with a thing called pattern matching. It's a real powerful way of expressing your if else switch with much more expressivity and the ability to extract values. In this example, um, I have the same type I declared in the previous slide, but I only handle the text and the media, so the compiler can tell me you forgot a case. And it can be really, really complex. You can say, you can extract the values. I could say if the URL is this precise URL, I react this way and, and uh, you just uh, eliminate some need for tooling because it guesses what cases you forgot. You have by default, everything is an expression local scopes, implicit returns, so you can have these patterns without needing to invoke a function immediately as you would do in JavaScript. And you'll tell me, okay, that's nice, that's in another language, but I need to work on the browser because I do JavaScript. Buckle script is a project in the Reason toolchain that takes OCaml and returns JavaScript, and it's faster than the vanilla JS framework. Makes, well, Okay, it makes optimizations you wouldn't do by hand because uh, it's able to to do it, and it's it's a compiler after all. And in general, in high-level programs like the ones we do in JavaScript, immutable and functional code is generally faster. The optimization I was talking about before is that because we have a finite number of keys in our object, name and age, the compiler is able to represent it in the form of an array, and then always say the zero key is the name, the one key is the age. So you have a very, very, very uh, small memory footprint. Uh, I did some benchmark yesterday comparing the exact two same versions of a thing in JavaScript and in Reason, and the memory footprint was twice as, uh, no, divided by two. I don't know how to say that. It sounds cool. But you might not want to rewrite everything from scratch because you already updated React Router once and you don't want to do that anymore. So you can import external JavaScript as, as long as you type it, as you say, okay, this, my module is a string, my module is something like this. Um, the compiler will then type the thing and uh, in the output file it will just uh, add your require or import statement. You can convert JavaScript objects into uh, Reason. To access a property in JavaScript, you just have to use the double, uh, double hash symbol. You can convert to JavaScript. It's just like decla declaring uh, JSON, actually. You just have to put quotes around the keys. And in summary, Reason does what everything in your JavaScript fatigue toolchain does. You have flow because it has OCaml, OCaml. Uh, you have Bebel, you have ESLint, and you have Prettier because all the tools are here. You don't have to install a thousand things. Some numbers of the usage we had. Uh, six months ago, we had 99% of JavaScript, and now we have 
70% of OKMO, which is pretty nice. The bonus of that is that you have a very cool version of React, which lets you type your state and uh, actions. You don't. Uh, how many of you use the Redux? You have a Redux in every component, actually, which is pretty nice because you have one place in your components where you update the state, reacting to different actions. And you just call it like this in the render function. And Reason React helped us. That was our, our entry point to Reason, actually. And it worked really, really well. What it did for us is give us a much safer code base. We had flow before, but this is on a whole new level. We have much less bugs, and we have no fear in changing code. Even something very deep in the app that has uh, that, that's uh, a dependency to anything else, you just change the file and you follow what the compiler tells you, and you don't have to try to be smart about it. And every day we ask just how the fuck did we manage to do that before, before uh, without these tools with JavaScript. It's just a miracle that we were able to do something like this before. And I think that's a good reason for typing. Thank you. Um, how do you handle like, React Native and React VR and stuff? Is it possible to use Reason there too? You create your own bindings if they are not available. But there are some bindings for popular libraries already. Hello. Uh, can you tell us something that you really didn't like about Reason? Hard, really hard. Uh, when I started, the the React uh, API changed a lot, uh, but uh, I was impressed because a uh, few months a uh, few months ago, they released a whole new syntax just so that it looks like JavaScript a bit more, and they just provided a, a uh, an, exe uh, an executable. I just ran it on my project with uh, I don't know uh, two thousand reason files, and it worked. So, because they use they use it at fa uh, at Facebook, uh, fifty percent of the uh, the messenger code base is in Reason already. So, because they have a, a big project, they provide the tooling if they require an update. Did you, by any chance, also evaluate it pure script? Uh, yeah, I looked at these projects, but uh, I think that using a, an old language is actually quite sane because you have a good community that revolves around it. We, the Reason community has some people from the JavaScript community, some people from the OCaml one. And the uh, OCaml is, is less uh, a purist, I think, because you can have a bit of mutability if you need, a bit of imperative code, a bit of uh, object-oriented, just like JavaScript, but safe. So it, it matches well, I think. Um, I have uh, two questions. The first one, you uh, you uh, declare um, a user type with an uh, optional uh, type uh, for age, and uh, you uh, see a, scr a screenshot with uh, an error, uh, and uh, you don't declare the uh, age of your object. It's normal because it's, if it's optional, you can. Uh, no, the optional means it's whether some something or none. But you have to put the the key uh, age and none if you don't have it. Okay, you uh, you are mandatory to have uh, age uh, property. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the second one is um, you can you use a uh, reason for a node for for Node.js to compile on yeah, the server side. Yeah, there are some examples and some talks uh, that uh, mention uh, how to make an express server but safe. And you can type the responses of your Express server so that you don't miss anything and let the pending request forever. Let, yeah, I, let's say I have a big project uh, using React, Redux, uh, I have Babel, ESLint, uh, Prettier, uh, all, all of these things. Uh, where, can I, where can I start using Reason? 
Uh, do you have uh, any advice uh, on the Redux store on one component? Uh, uh, I say the Redux store should be your last, the, the last thing you do. You can start uh, with small components just to see if you like it, or that's the uh, first thing, and then you can incrementally add stuff, but um, you can replace files, ex existing, uh, existing files, uh, and after that, it's anything. I just don't recommend you do that for uh, m very important part at first because you, if you're not very familiar with the language, don't put don't put your business logic at risk. All right, last question. Um, a question about how big is the um, community around uh, that technology? Is it bigger or smaller than the two others we we saw this morning uh, just before? No, for now it's very very small. It's a small community, but it has uh, backing from uh, Facebook, and I can see some uh, um, some well-known people in the JavaScript community just coming because of the cu the curiosity, and they uh, it's it's a, pro a progress. I think React we had prop types, we just were more curious about the rest. Then we learned Flow and TypeScript, and it, this is just the next step, and uh, having much much safer code because it's built in the language. Thank you.